Live. Welcome everyone to Online BizSmart. Uh, today we're doing a four-part presentation on how to blog. The basics of blogging, uh, we could definitely do probably ten of these and may do so. On different aspects of blogging, uh, we're not going to really cover the aspect of how to write per se. That's another uh, uh, hangout and another class. But this one uh, is going to be primarily on uh, you know, the why, the how um, of basic blogging. So today again is how to blog and I'm Mike Gray from Online Bismarck and we will look at uh, these four topics. Why should I blog? Number one, uh, you're busy people. Why should you do that? And uh, number two, uh, who is my audience? Who am I blogging for? Uh, three, how do I optimize my blog post so that somebody can actually find it besides my mom? And four, how do I promote my blog post and where do I promote my blog post? So in beginning with why, start with why, you may have heard that before. Uh, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, I would suggest it. But this is a different why. Why should I blog? Uh, I want to start with the fact that we're blogging because we're building our marketing house. Uh, this is, a, I heard a, a similar quote to this and re revised it a little bit uh, recently at Social Media Marketing World. Don't build your marketing house on rented property. Uh, so we don't want to build everything that we're doing on uh, a social media platform because the platform can go away. Uh, the rules of the platform can go away uh, or change. Um, and so if I build a strategy entirely based on a social media platform, I don't own that property. You do own your website. So blogging is one of the key things that you can do, writing content to uh, develop search for your site. And uh, then once you get them to your website, you want to think conversions. Uh, what do I want them to do? What do I want them to click? How would I like my clients to connect with me in a way that is going to lead to the next step for them? Uh, so you get to decide that, but you got to make sure that your website does that visually. There's an easy click to subscribe, click to call, click to fill out an email opt-in form. Uh, that you should have on your website and it should be very prominent and featured on your site. So why should a blog? 55% more website visitors for companies that blog. I don't know about the rest of you, but I would like 55% more of tr website visitors. Uh, I'd like 55% more of cake. I would like 55% more of any pie. Uh, but especially website visitors. Uh, I mean, who doesn't want more visitors to their website? Consistent bloggers get 55% more. The impact of blogging on leads. So if you're in a sales industry and you're in a sales business, uh, you have two graphs here, business to consumer and business to business. A uh, big difference in each category uh, for uh, the leads generated, companies who blog, not quite double, but uh, 30 to 40 percent more uh, leads for companies who do blog. So the value is there for people who are blogging on a regular basis and blogging consistently and blogging well. So why does blogging benefit your business? Uh, to begin with, it builds search traffic. Uh, so you hear the word SEO a lot. Every time you're writing a blog post, it's another page on your website that makes you an authority on the topics that you're talking about. More site visitors, more conversions, and uh, what's another reason? Increased credibility. So you're building pre-sell trust or you're just building trust as a whole. Uh, very important that you build that relationship pre-purchase as well as you foster the relationship post-purchase. It hum humanizes your company. You are more human. You are a person. People don't want to do business 
with a company, they want to do business with a person. And in most cases, you are that person that people want to connect to, and they want to know that you have a pulse and you care about things and what you're passionate about, etc. And also, finally, most importantly for most companies, generating leads. It may not be that that's your ideal strategy, but in many cases, the reason we have a website is to generate leads and then convert them. Another reason for a blog, a lot of big corporations uh, use their blog as a customer service tool. Uh, so they talk about products, they talk about uh, um, the things that they do. Whole Foods does this really well. They talk about uh, uh, topical things that are interesting to their clientele and then they, in their responses, that are, are uh, fulfilling customer service and staying connected through their blog as well as social media. So the basics of blogging. Uh, Hopefully you believe at this point uh, on the why you should blog. So if any of you guys want to jump in at this point and uh, ask any questions, I'd love to answer anything that you might have. Anyone? It's a, it's a dead quiet audience at this point. That's okay. Uh, we will continue on with who is my audience? Who is your audience? Um, who is the who? Uh, identifying your target audience. Um, who is it that you would, not just that you could do business with, but who would you like to do business with? Who is it that you get the most fulfillment from when you are doing business with them? And uh, who is it that uh, converts in a smoother transaction? Uh, that's the customer you want to do business with. Uh, break, break your target down into three or four segments. Uh, it may be age demographics. Uh, it may be uh, location. It may be that your business has uh, three to five distinctive uh, groups within it and, and that you may need to target each one individually. Uh, then define where they spend their time online. And uh, we use the tool Lean Stack very often to help walk through the process from defining an audience to defining a message for that audience and, and beyond. It's a real cool tool and you can walk through it uh, very quickly to discover uh, what, what your audience is going to consume best and even define the social media and or blogging platforms that you would use to connect with that ideal audience. So you want to discover what people's interests are, what their goals are. You want to discover what are their problems, especially when it relates to your business. What problem does your business solve for them? And what are their pain points? Same as problem. What is it that your, your product or your service does to relieve those pain points? And then hot buttons. What are they passionate about? What do they love? What do they hate? You want to discover all of those things. So drilling down a little bit further, uh, who you develop uh, age, location, gender, education, what is their job title, what do they do for work, um, and then environment. Uh, when and where are they using your site and what, this is very important, what devices are they coming to your site from? Because if they're coming primarily from mobile and you haven't mobile optimized a website, you're missing all your target audiences in that case. And uh, so again, your audience, what tasks, what are they trying to complete? What are they trying to do? Are they learning something from you? Are you giving them something valuable uh, as far as education, motivation? Uh, so what is their broader desired outcome? What are their goals, problems? And again, as I said, pain points. And then t what I like to do is uh, draw a, uh, you know, a stick man avatar or whatever you may decide to use or put a picture of a real person there from stock photo, photo give him or her a name and uh, begin to write these details and have a fact sheet uh, for where you are going to uh, define every little possible detail that you can. So at this point I'm, I'm working for a company 
and uh, they are looking for local market demographics and they are looking for uh, national and international uh, buying habits for their age demographic that they're targeting. So we're going to gather all of that information and we may end up with four or five pages uh, of data on, on this avatar, this person, this ideal customer that we want to target. And all of that then helps us craft a message, uh, a website, a, a blog post, our social media campaigns in a way that makes sense for that client. So before we go any further, let's uh, see how you guys are doing and see if you have any questions on who is your audience. Mike, I have a question. Yes, Susan. So I, I'm a retailer with a you know, physical product to, to sell. And I struggle with this all the time, get, trying to determine the pain points. So I, I think I know who my customer is. But a blog to entice them to buy, um, you know, my newest creation of red jewelry. Uh huh. And I'm, I'm, I, I want to blog, but I'm not sure how blogging will help me sell that particular item. Okay. Uh, I I I happen to know that uh, what your business is and that you sell jewelry. Uh, but you also sell, um, you have a company that sells the pieces to make jewelry. Um, I think even within the process of both combined, people want to know how it's constructed, how it's done, what it's made of. And the most important thing I would say along those ways, and we're going to jump into that. I don't want to give everything away because that's in uh, part of how do I optimize my blog post is a little more of the details of answering the questions that your ideal client has. So okay. when they're looking for jewelry, and this goes back to your avatar sheet, what is it that they're pursuing? What is it that they need? Um, I think I've heard you answer this question before, uh, that, you, that they are looking for the ideal piece of jewelry to match an outfit, a handbag or a pair of shoes. Is that correct? That's correct, right. So all, all within that, uh, what, we, what you've said and what we just discussed there are 10 topics that we just kind of blazed over right quickly that you could be writing blog articles about. Um, make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, and we'll get a little more into it on how to optimize here in just a moment. Other questions? No? Okay. We'll continue on. And uh, next is how do I optimize my blog post? So this is going to be a little bit more on the technical side. Uh, we're going to start with the topic and the title. Uh, so what is it that you're going to be talking about? Uh, but, but before you pick a topic, make sure that you've listened, and this goes back to defining who they are. But you can listen on social media, uh, you can to conversations, uh, you can do a little bit of stalking. I, I say stalk your clients a little bit beforehand so that you know what do they care about, what are they passionate about, what are the things that are uh, of big concern to them. Uh, you can do surveys. I suggest on, at the register or a digital online follow-up. So if you have a shopping cart, have a have a survey that pops out to say, uh, you know, what made you decide to buy this item, and uh, uh, was it to go with something else, or was it an accessory, uh, etc. Lots of questions. There's thousands of questions you can come up with there to help you better define your audience. And then client FAQs, a really good tip that I got at Social Media Marketing World this last week was have everybody on the sales force especially, every time they answer a client's question, to blind CC the marketing department. And that way all of those questions are coming in and they're being able to formulate those great topics that people are interested in. You find commonality and people are asking the same question. 
over and over and you want to make sure you address those very clearly common problems this could even be back to the cost customer service side of things what are they continuing to bump up against a failed product or a glitch in a product that you're finding commonality in conversation online so pick inviting topics that make people want to click and read and again this is Susan this is where we were talking about answer the questions your customers are asking they're asking questions and some of them uh, you're even afraid to answer uh, one of the present presenters uh, at uh, social media marketing world did a closing presentation real inspiring and uh, he, he made everybody raise their hand that uh, talks about pricing on their website and it was it felt like 10 people in a room of 2000 uh, and, and so then he began to challenge us why don't you talk about it do you think your customers don't care about it do you think they're not interested in it you gotta talk about it because if you talk about it you may be the only one in your industry who is it doesn't mean you're giving a price list per se but you're talking about it for him they were a pool company and uh, the answer was in short it depends uh, it's kinda like buying a car it, it, do you want uh, you know surround sound do you want uh, leather do you want so all of those things it depends but because he addressed the topic on his website his site became one of the most searched uh, globally in the pool industry because nobody else had answered the question of pricing when it came to pools so tools a few tools resources uh, for topics is uh, one of my favorites is Google Trends uh, you can use Google Trends to really discover how much is how much chatter how much conversation is happening on a given topic how many people are writing articles about uh, specific topics uh, and you can see here the titles are investments guaranteed and cash flow uh, we got three different words and you can see on investment look at the downtrend and uh, that's from the year 2005 to almost current so you can see that the topic of investments is trending down uh, so you may be able to find some other topics that people have begun the bu new buzzwords that people are beginning to use when uh, uh, publishing your blog post so you want to make sure that you <laughs> you're not using topics and titles that have completely disappeared that nobody cares about you're not answering a question that nobody's asking that's the wrong kind of question to answer so why is your headline important uh, the anatomy of a perfect, timeless, and share shareable post. People judge a post by its headline. Don't you guys do this when you're scrolling through and uh, you're just reading titles? And then when one jumps out at you, you click and go check it out. Uh, is it catchy? Uh, if it doesn't catch, you know, ten, uh, ten timeless truths about this or five five steps to those things are oh that would help me that's a topic I like I'm gonna read and discover the five things that's going to make me a less of a geek that's impossible anyway a high SEO value include your keyword phrases so uh, and if possible start the title with the keyword phrase we're gonna really dig in deep here in just a moment on uh, the anatomy structure and layout of a blog post but uh, key phrase uh, as things begin to shift to mobile think not just key word think key phrase that somebody would speak into a phone to search for what your product is so here's three more tools to help you write amazing headlines uh, write headlines that shine and you see the uh, the uh, post there and uh, you'll be able to uh, get the links and these slideshows on SlideShare. Uh, we'll make them public afterwards and link it to the video so that you can go and click and utilize all of these. Uh, a scientific approach to writing blog titles and uh, 52 headline hacks. Again, it's, it's, it's strategies. It's, it's how to craft it in a way that's going to be catchy 
that people are going to be interested and want to uh, read your article. So how to achieve your blogging strategy? Uh, well, one being conclude <laughs> conclude the article with a call to action. Don't just write a fantastic article that 10 million people are going to read. At the end of it, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to read your book? Do you want them to go to your site and buy something? Uh, you want them to go to, uh, Susan, you said jewelry. You would want them to go to the site and pick out a really nice piece that uh, uh, matches up with something else. Uh, or you may want them to subscribe to your email. Uh, make your question engaging. So maybe you just want to uh, engage the conversation and talk about the topic more. Uh, ask them to comment and share. Ask for an opt-in. Ask for purchase. Make it easy. I say one click easy for them to take the action that you want them to take. So here are some tools that you may have seen on sites, and we have some of these on our site. Uh, you can put them before or after blog posts so that people engage in your content, share it. Uh, you know, they, uh, People are going to think your content is amazing and want to share it. If there's not a share button right there that's easy to use, you may miss out on that opportunity. So make it easy to subscribe as well. Uh, make a, a email opt-in anytime that you possibly can or if you're using you know a Weber constant contact have them subscribe to your email list and then you can publish your blog post or a sub portion of your blog post to your email list to get more engagement on your blog post uh, you'll see Michael Hyatt doing that uh, Michael Hyatt's one of the best bloggers when it comes to telling you how to blog. Uh, Dale and I went to his class recently, very engaging, but uh, so he'll push out a blog post and then once or twice a week he will email blast uh, his email list with uh, the basic first paragraph or so of that article and a link that goes back to the blog post to read more. So it's enticing that big email list that he's built to, hey, come over to the site, I've got a new article for you to read and consume. So the SEO, this is, uh, no matter what I do, I seem to get more questions about SEO than anything else, uh, no matter uh, if I'm talking about <laughs> Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any other social channels. But SEO, the, the heart of SEO is actually on your website. And uh, uh, my definition is optimizing your site and content to match the phrase someone would be typing into a Google search box. So if somebody's got a problem that your product solves and they go, how do I fix my fill in the blank? Uh, how do I, how do I, so, so uh, I know we have some help, self, some self help people uh, on today. So how do I, how do I fix myself? Uh, I have a problem, uh, I have a transition in life, uh, what do I do next? How do I pick what I'm going to do next? Uh, I know Barb, you're, you're an expert in that field. So as people are asking those questions, and this goes back to what we said, be, answer the questions that people are asking and you will naturally uh, have SEO because people are typing that into Google search. I know people search on Bing and others, but the volume is uh, really not comparable. So again, here you see, uh, as you're writing an article, you start with the title, you know, top nine steps to use social media to grow your business. Um, and again, make it engaging. You see there we're using nine steps, uh, although nine steps is kind of a lot. <laughs> uh, but hey, sometimes I, I like 45 steps uh, to help me be a great blogger. Uh, I've actually read a very similar article to that. So a simple guide to SEO, uh, SEO techniques are important, but write for people and for search engines. Primarily write for people and then optimize it for search engines, I think would be a better way to say it. Write great post titles, include your keywords and key phrases. Provide quality content with related keywords and include relevant and helpful links. And here's what I mean by that. Relevant meaning somebody else has written something to do with what you're talking about 
or a piece of what you're talking about linked to that so that uh, you've got those outbound links to your content. So here is uh, a blog posting template. It's on our website. And you can jump to this posting template, as it were. I'm going to jump to it. I've got it live here. And uh, we'll switch to that layout and that blog post. And you'll see, why should I use a blog posting template? So that template that you saw, this is the article based on that. So I just want to kind of go over a little bit of the anatomy of this post. This is a WordPress site uh, for onlinebestmarch.com. And you can see my title, uh, Blog Posting Template, Seven Steps to Website SEO. You can see there that um, I, again, seven steps. I'm optimizing on blog posting template, and I've utilized website SEO in the title as well. Now I want to show you uh, a few things on the template. Uh, again, it's on our site. You can download it, use it. Uh, it's linked to this article, but I actually have this exact template. And you can see the places that you put, and you notice I put key phrase. Don't think word or words, think phrase. What is somebody saying or typing into search to find what you're going to provide for them? And you can see the locations. You make sure that you've optimized the image alt tag. You create some H2 headings. Another thing that H2 headings do, if you notice, if you look at that, it kind of breaks up the content. If I were to just write all of that without any breaks and any of the bolded H2 headings, uh, it would people kind of land and they go, oh, that's a lot of copy. I don't think I want to read all of that. And they'll, they'll bug out. Uh, versus if there's some breaks in there or additional graphics, uh, people will kind of say, OK, that looks consumable. Uh, or snackable is another. Uh, it's, it's small enough that I can consume it without being overwhelmed. Let's jump back over to the blog and see where uh, I've written this particular article. And we'll look at a few details on it. Uh, one of the key things being that I use a, a, an SEO tool, and I'll talk about it here in just a moment. But you can see as I've laid out this article that um, it's, it's broken up. There are some nice breaks in it so that, uh, again, you can see some space in between the paragraphs, and you have additional content a little further down. Well, let's look and see what this looks like uh, live on the post. If my internet will catch up to me. OK. So here is the article itself. And as we scroll down, you see some nice uh, space, some H2 headings bolded in between, and uh, what that looks like as the content, and you consume it. Now, this is all. This does run together here quite a bit, but this is all actually a copied uh, piece of this uh, Yoast plugin that I'm going to show you here in just a moment. So, basic anatomy, and I could probably add some more spacing in there to break it up a little bit more and it would make it a little bit more snackable or a little bit more uh, consumable by uh, my readers. OK, so back on, as we said, the reason why blog. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to lose this. 55% more website visitors for people who blog. So the basics of blogging, we're going to jump to how do I promote. But before I do that, I'm going to do what I promised. And let's cover the Yoast plugin, because that's all in that article there. So we'll go back to the blog to posting template and edit. And as we logged in, here, here you see you're writing all the copy here. And it's populating very slowly, but I promise you, it's really there. OK, and we're going to scroll down a bit. And I'll show you the tool. Da, da, da. 
So you can see the article. Now here below is the WordPress SEO by Yoast. Uh, it's got the uh, blog posting. You know, here's your basic snippet. If I don't add anything to this area down here, it takes that snippet from the first of your article. Uh, but it gives you the ability to customize it. And you can see that I've done that. My focus keyword for this article is blog posting template. And my SEO title, again, this is what's going to show up here. This will show up right here. And uh, then the meta description, you'll see that this shows up here. It tells you how many characters. It actually counts the characters as you type so that you're doing the optimized amount of each. And then meta keywords, you'll see that I've done here. Now, as I'm writing this article, once I've uh, uh, updated it a couple of times, you can click the check button. And it'll bring you to this page, which is the same place, but it's the page analysis. And it'll tell you specifically the pieces that you need to update and change to optimize your blog post. So you don't have to. Uh, know immediately all the things that you should publish and optimize uh, to create a little more SEO and more searchability for your blog post. All you need to do is be able to follow directions. And that's a little bit of a struggle for me because I'm a guy and we don't like to read instructions. But this is very helpful. I do use this uh, every time I write a post. I've actually gotten into the habit now where I don't have to look at it as much because I have the habit of optimizing as I go. But I still verify this on each of my blog posts. And it starts, your, uh, your button up above will start red, and then it'll go yellow, and then it'll go re uh, green. And I'll show you that again. That's right here. Uh, it starts yellow. And once you've got it optimized to where it's a pretty good article, it'll turn green like this one. And then you hit update, and you just created an amazing blog post that people will love to read and will be very searchable on Google. <clears throat> All right, so we're about to transition into how do I promote my blog post and where to promote my blog post, but what questions do you have about all of that fun optimization stuff? Um, Michael, this is Barb Isley. I have a question. Hi. Hi. You said that we should have a link to somebody else's information, that that's another you know, strategy in there. Okay. My yes. concern about that is that it takes them away from my website. Okay. Good, good point. Could take them on another path. Yeah. So very good question. And... Uh, my suggestion is to always uh, link to the experts in the industry. So who's the foremost thought leader in what you do and what you're talking about? And right. any link that you create outbound from your website should always launch a new page or a new tab uh, yep. to where your site is still underneath and they still have your site open in a tab. But yes, there's a couple of, it does boost the searchability of your website uh, to be connected to expertise sites that uh, get millions of hits uh, on a given topic. So okay. you, you want to make it easier for the reader to consume. And if there's a, if, if for instance I was talking about SEO, I would link that SEO out to maybe an explanation of what SEO is. But I'm going to try to explain it. Uh, but I can give a detailed explanation by adding a link. Does that make sense? Yep, it sure does. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Any other questions? I have a follow-up to that one. This is Susan. Hi, Susan. So I already have an idea about a good link. And so I, when I put in the link, how do I be assured that it's going to open in a new tab? Uh, I suggest to always test them. So uh, open up your... Open up your uh, uh, preview and click and check your links uh, because even the best of us have messed up some of those links and driven people to somewhere other than what we intended. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, other questions? Yes, go ahead. Yes, Michael. This is a follow-up to Susan's question and okay. you said test them. 
Uh -huh. So if I put the link in the art in my blog, yes. Um, the default is to have it open in another page. Uh, it depends on your blogging platform, um, but uh, I would always double check. Make sure that you're adding that link to open in a new page, not to default to drive them away from your site without uh, leaving your site still open on their computer. Yeah, I just didn't know. I just don't know how to make. I know how to test it. I just don't know how to change it if it's not opening in another page. Okay. I guess uh, I, I think I do have a, a brief how-to on that uh, video on okay. my YouTube channel for online okay, smarts. Um, and uh, if you'll refer to that, I'll drop the link out to you so that you Thank can you. Uh, walk through how to do that. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Awesome. Any other questions? No, I don't have. Great. Questions. Good questions, all. Uh, we're going to move on to how to promote my blog post and where to promote it. So uh, you may hear this referred to as curation, uh, but publishing your article. So you've written this fantastic, brilliant article that everybody's going to want to consume, but they don't know about it. So we need to put it out on our, our social media sites. And uh, first of all, publish it where your target audience spends time. Those are the social platforms that you should develop. Uh, I talked about the newsletter. Uh, if you've got a reasonably sized newsletter, you should be not pushing every article. Don't bomb somebody's email in. Uh, but once a week, I think, is, is appropriate uh, to, or maybe every other week, is appropriate to send uh, an, a newsletter through AWeber, Constant Contact, uh, Infusionsoft, uh, wherever it may be that you use as a tool to publish out to your email list. Um, publish when they're online. Uh, that's kind of a no-brainer, but do the study to find out, uh, like uh, with uh, Facebook Insights, it'll tell you of all the people that like your page, when are they online? It'll tell you when, are, when they're online and the day of the week and the time during each specific day so that you can get in before that big tidal wave of uh, people online and make sure that the maximum number of people see it. And then obviously, as we said before, you're going to publish, you're going to optimize for search. So you can see the diagram again, social publishing. This isn't necessarily representative of your company. This is just the right mix for a company. You have to decide again based on where your audience is on the tools that you will use but uh, it may be Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google Plus, Pinterest, you know the list goes on, or Tumblr, uh, uh, there are so many places that you can, you don't want to just publish everywhere um, because it may not be relevant uh, on a lot of platforms so where are they at, where are your target audience and uh, how can you best connect with them uh, you see pay-per-click, newsletter, and a few other ways to connect. But everything is always driving the traffic back to your website. So publish where your target audience spends their time. Publish when they're online. Hey, that rhymed a little bit. If I rhyme the rest of this, let's see how I... No, okay. We need to move ahead. Uh, automate. So when possible, automate uh, from your blog. Uh, I have a couple of plugins that I use to automatically pub publish to all of my social channels. Uh, you could use Hootsuite uh, for scheduling, or uh, you may also use a tool called ifttt.com. It stands for If This Then That, and it is a great publishing tool that will automate a lot of your publishing that you want to use. Um, Publish for search by answering clients' questions. So I said that again. I want to reiterate it. What are those questions that your clients are asking that you would most uh, be able to answer? And uh, answer the ones that are asked more frequent first and then work your way down the list. The better you get at answering those questions, the more searchable your content is going to become. Because people are going to that Google search bar and they're typing in questions that they need answer. If you're the one answering them, then you're going to make the connection. So a recap, uh, writing for people and for Google. Optimize the SEO, but don't overdo it. 
make it memorable, make it be something that people, uh, and make it easy to share. So if it's memorable, people want to share it, uh, close with a call to action and make it easy to just subscribe via email. And the double bonus, now that you have people on your website, what do you want them to do? So think conversion. Uh, you may have on your blog a sidebar or you may have something else uh, in order to get them on your sidebar to get them convert and to be uh, take the next step. What is it that you want them to do? You want them to opt into your email list or you want them to uh, email opt in to your blog posts. You have the ability of uh, putting those things at the bottom of your blog post as well as on your sidebar in order to make those connections with your ideal clients. So let's do some more question and answer, guys. Silence. The sound of silence. Did I put you to sleep? No. Are you still alive? No. Oh, yay. The crowd is still alive. Any other questions? Michael, it's Susan. Hi, Susan. Somewhere along the line, early in my study of this, I heard that ideal length of a blog post is 350 words. As a former writer, I know that's a very short piece of text. Do you have any guidelines on how long something should be to be snackable? I uh, oh, sweet. Snackable. Uh, 350 to 500 words is a good starting point, okay. but it all depends on the audience. Uh, if you're writing highly technical how-to type things, uh, people will read you know 1,500 words easily if you're telling them step by step how to do something. Uh, so you want to make sure you match the audience and you're delivering what they need. Uh, but on a normal conversational type blog post, 350, 500 words is a, is a good starting point. And with that, should I include an image, a photo, or a video? Oh, yeah, always. Always. Always, uh, for several reasons. Uh, it helps break up the copy. Uh, it also, when you publish to social media, it'll include that image. And in many cases, there on social media, the image is what engages before they catch the title. Uh, so you want to be very engaging with your images as well as have optimized them for search. Okay, thank you. You betcha. Anyone else? Uh, I. <clears throat> it's Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi. Um, these. Ladies have a product, and you know my Green Energy Tucson idea. I'm uh -huh. still stuck on, I'd like to blog. I have a lot to say about the environment, but I need to affiliate with people and try to monetize. I'm stuck on this monetization part. Well, so. that's definitely a different conversation uh, that we'll cover in monetization, but for the blog portion of that, uh, you have a wealth of information and knowledge that you can be just cranking out mm -hmm. and it's a very highly consumed topic at this point that people want to know about and they want to read more about so even before you necessarily have worked out your monetization you can be building following with these articles to where people are going to want to come to Tina's blog and uh, read the Green Tucson articles because they're the best articles when it comes to sustainability and uh, how to do things differently and more green. Does that make sense? Um, absolutely. Thank yeah. you. But I, maybe I'm planting a seed for another event. Another blog? Uh, another hangout, yeah, on, uh, on uh, converting and monetizing. Uh, you find some people, I have a couple of clients that have massive followings, but they've never made the step to monetize it. They've written books, they've got DVDs, and there's no quick, easy click-through to buy stuff. Uh, and Once you get a following, you, you, some of them are going to be raging, uh, avid fans, and you got to make it one click easy for them to buy your product or hire you for consulting or whatever it may be that you decide to use in the way of 
uh, conversion to monetization. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Thank Good you. one. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you Can guys. Read that comment, oh, Michael. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. This is Barb. You know, I, 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 this comes to mind for Tina because I I've been thinking about this for myself. But there, there's hot there's hot topics in the sustainability world, and one of them right now is local food security. So it's, I wonder. Sure. I'm looking for your validation. You know, when you know that something's happening in the green community it would seem that that might be where you jump on. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it would go back to answering questions. Um, you know, what's coming up in the news? What is it that people are talking about in print, in media, on TV, etc., in the context of your topic? And you should have some searches set up to where the, that's dropping into your email notification or some way to funnel that content to you to yourself where you find the commonality of questions that are being asked. Forums uh, are great for that. When people are searching and they go to a forum, there are just thousands and millions of, of questions that people have out there and the better you get at answering them. Again, the more following you're going to get and then when you get to the place of monetization, then it, it should be an easy switch because you have a pretty big following that you've built with your blog. Yeah, thanks. You betcha. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to call it uh, a day. It's been a pleasure being with you again. I'm Mike Gray with OnlineBizSmarts.com, and this has been Basic Blogging. <laughs>